Hi, this is Megan, and welcome to another one of your master classes. Today's master class is all about functional nutrition and nutrition in general, and what that what functional medicine and what functional nutrition is is basically getting to the root of what your body needs in order to heal, in order to stay healthy, and in order to fix any problem that you have going on. There's a few main fundamentals that are kind of in the latest science and the latest functional nutrition about what our bodies need and what we need to be eating to stay healthy and to feel our best and to look our best. So today we're going to go and dive right into our functional nutrition masterclass. So this is where a lot of people get tripped up because they're wondering what diet they should be following. Should you be vegan? Should you be paleo? Should you be gluten-free? You just hear all of this crazy stuff going on in the world today. And basically what it all comes down to is no matter what diet you choose to follow, because the truth is everyone is bio-individual, we all, our body reacts to certain foods differently. You, the diet that's good for you, is probably not good for your best friend. So, but however, there are five foundational principles that apply to everybody that you need to get down that apply to everyone that work for everyone and that are very 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 important so we're going to go over those five main functional nutritional uh, principles right now so the first one is we're going to go over all your essential nutrients so what you do need to be eating every day because that's what your body's made of two we're going to go over food quality three we're going to go over our toxic foods. Four, we're going to talk about gut health because that's very important if you have not already been hearing that lately. And five, we're going to talk about your microbiome. So let's dive into the very first principle right now, which is essential nutrients. So here's the thing that you really, really need to understand. Your body and every organ in your body your hormones, your neurotransmitters, your organs, every cell in your body is made up of what you are giving it, what you are eating and drinking. So if you're not eating and drinking the right things, your body can only use the material you're giving it. So we really need to make sure we're giving it the right thing so it can make us awesome hormones, awesome neurotransmitters, and an awesome body. It can only use what we're giving it, so we have to give it the essential nutrients. So, basic principles. We have our micronutrients, which are our vitamins and minerals. And then you have your macronutrients, which are your amino acids, which are proteins, fats, your essential fatty acids, and carbs. So, and so those are your three macro, and then vitamins and minerals are your micronutrients. So we need to be getting great amounts of both of those. So let's start with vitamins and minerals. Why are vitamins and minerals so important? We, all, we hear that everywhere. Um, but what do they actually do? So they actually convert your food into energy, and they build and repair your tissues and your DNA. Um, they manufacture hormones, manufacture neurotransmitters and re your reproductive health. Basically, they're kind of like they, they take the food you eat and they help convert it into where it needs to go. And so, so many people in our culture today, especially America, are so deficient in essential vitamins and micronutrients like um, vitamins and minerals and their micronutrients because they're not eating vegetables. And when they think they're eating vegetables, they're eating not enough vegetables. We should be eating a pound of vegetables a day if you can. And how many of us are actually doing that? So a lot of people are... De um, deficient in their vitamins and minerals and that leads to fatigue is a huge one. If you're suffering with fatigue, um, micronutrient deficiency is a huge, huge factor of that. Hormone imbalances, skin issues, digestive issues, because like I said, it's these vitamins and minerals that help do all the processes in your body. So basically, if you're not eating tons and tons of vegetables at every meal, and bone broths and green juices and organ meats and fruits and vegetables basically every day then you're probably not getting all the micronutrients you need to be completely optimal and healthy 
So super important micronutrients are your B vitamins, essential for energy. So like I said, if you're doing fatigue, really, really look into where your B vitamin status is at, especially B12. Infects energy more than you can ever imagine. Magnesium, we know that's huge. If you suffer from anxiety, sleep problems, constipation, magnesium is huge, 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 huge. And then other ones are vitamin D, vitamin C, zinc, iodine, selenium. All of these are very, very important vitamins and minerals for brain function, hormone function, thyroid, energy, sleep, and mood regulation. So these are certain nutrients that I think that we can all kind of supplement with as well because it's, like I said, if you're if you're not going to eat a pound of vegetables a day, you, got, you should be kind of maybe taking a B vitamin or eating liver because liver is the best bioavailable source of B vitamins you can ever find and it'll give you so much energy. Magnesium, huge. Take Epsom salt baths. Take extra magnesium. It'll calm your mind. It'll calm your nervous system. It'll calm your body. Magnesium is huge for anxiety. And then vitamin D, if you're not getting, obviously, enough sun every day, vitamin D is important. It's actually a hormone. Um, it's not even a vitamin, so it's very important for if you're struggling any kind of hormonal issues, taking extra vitamin D is huge, especially in the winter. Um, and so, and then, of course, we can go into a lot of these, like iodine and selenium and zinc are really important for your thyroid. So kind of depending on what problems you're struggling with are kind of what nutrients you would have to supplement with. Okay, so now we're going to go into the macronutrients. So those are the micronutrients and macro. So proteins are amino acids. This is what you need to remember about proteins. Proteins are the building blocks for your neurotransmitters. Your neurotransmitters are brain chemicals like serotonin, dopamine, all of those brain chemicals that make you feel normal and good and motivated. Okay, so if you're not eating enough protein, then your body's not getting the building blocks it needs to make neurotransmitters. So a lot of people with anxiety and depression are actually super, super deficient in amino acids. Very, very, very deficient because they're not eating enough protein, so their body's not getting enough building blocks to make neurotransmitters. So it's actually incredible with if you struggle with anxiety or depression, start in incorporating protein at every meal and every snack and watch kind of your mood and energy lift. Um, so like I said, if you have hormone imbalances, if you have mood, depression, or anxiety disorders, um, make sure you're eating enough protein because it'll, it's huge. The amino acids, um, you can actually supplement. Some people who are actually really depressed actually take certain amino acids in pill form to help their brain get back on track. You can also just eat enough protein at every meal, give your, building, give your body the building blocks it needs to make the neurotransmitters, and you'll be good to go. Okay, so your essential fatty acids, second ma macronutrient. So proteins are the building block for neurotransmitters. Fat is the building block for your hormones and brain function and healthy skin. Okay, so it is crucial. So fat is so crucial. Okay, so fat is so crucial for your brain and your hormones and your skin. So your brain is made out of 60% fat. And like I said, fat strongly influences your brain function, your energy, and your mood, and your hair, and your skin, and your nails. So remember, healthy fats are the building blocks for healthy hormones, a healthy brain, and healthy skin. Fat should make up a majority, majority of your diet. If you want to feel your best, think your best, and look your best. But we have to understand that not all fats are created equal. So we need to be, because the toxic fats are actually, will damage your skin and your hair and your nails 
the, those d damaging fats are actually what causes heart disease. So we need to be getting the good fats. So here are the good fats. There's either healing fats or toxic fats. Here's are the healing fats. The number one fat that's actually the best fat for your body is saturated fat. And we've been told that saturated fat is not good for you, which has been the biggest lie and the biggest contributor to actually a lot of people's health problems because avoiding saturated fat is actually so damaging for your brain and your hormones. Um, we actually need a lot of saturated fat in our diet because that's the building blocks of your hormones. So saturated fats include things like coconut oil, MCT oil, grass-fed butter, egg yolks, um, which are all so crucial for your reproductive and your heart and your brain function. Um, these fats are, saturated fats are actually the easiest type of fat for your body to digest. So if, for example, coconut oil, you, you, oil, your liver doesn't even have to work to digest it. So your body can just absorb it and use it straight away as energy. Saturated fats are amazing. Make sure you're eating some every single day. Healing fat number two, monounsaturated fats, which we've all heard is the healthy kind of fat, like avocados and olive oil and nuts and seeds. Um, these aren't as easy for your body to digest, but still amazing. Avocados, amazing for your hormones. An avocado a day will do such a tremendous amount to your health, you will be blown away. Healing fat number three, are, of course, your omega-3 fats, so your EPA and your DHA. So we need to be getting good amounts of those as well because it's very, very um, helpful for your brain and your hormones. Uh, and so you kind of can get this through fish like wild-caught salmon or sardines or fish oil like cod liver oil or really good quality fish oil. Remember, most fish oils on the uh, market are toxic and rancid, so be very, very picky about what kind you choose. But again, omega-3, EPA, and DHA fats are very important as well. Okay, healing fats number four. Um, so then you have like omega-6 fats, which are kind of in nuts as well. Um, nuts and kind of like seed oils and grains, which we do need a little bit of those, but we, we don't want to go overboard, so you don't want to eat too many nuts because um, that could actually cause inflammation, but coconut oil, egg yolks, grass-fed butter, avocados, load up on those kind of fats, and your brain and your skin and your hormones will love you. You'll notice a huge difference in your skin if you start eating a bunch of healthy fat. You really will. Okay, so these are the toxic fats. So avoid, avoid, avoid these toxic fats with everything you can because these fats are the number one cause for heart disease and inflammation and blocked arteries um, and such, they cause such inflammation and in the body and even cause things like leaky gut and intestinal permeability and they cause this inflammation so it's terrible for your skin, it's terrible for your brain, terrible for your heart, terrible for your hormones. So avoid vegetable oils, canola oil, soy oil, um, corn oil, the so these are the real reason for heart disease. It's not saturated fats, it's the vegetable oils. And it's because America these days, that's all we're eating is vegetable oils because look in any packaging. If you go look in your house and you go look through your packaged foods, you'll find vegetable oils in almost all of them. You'll find canola, your dressings, everything. You'll find canola, you'll find soybean oil, and everywhere you go, restaurants, fast food, but even any restaurants, they still cook with canola oil and soybean oil. So we are getting inundated with such of with all these vegetable oils, which is tons of omega-6 fatty acids. So we're having so much omega-6 that, and so little omega-3 that it's causing all this inflammation in our body. So we've really, really got to do as much as we can to avoid vegetable oils. Because remember, every cell in your body is made up of fat and has fat and the type of fat you eat your cells become that so you want your cells to become a bunch of cells with healthy fat in it and not toxic fat right so watch the fat you eat okay so third macronutrient is carbohydrates so um, we do need healthy 
good sources of carbohydrates because they're really important for your thyroid and your adrenal functions. But quality really matters. So when I'm talking carbohydrates, I'm not talking bread and pastas um, and sugar and cookies and cereal and even fruit juices. Um, we want complex carbohydrates. And what complex carbohydrates do is they break down slowly in the body. And so they provide you kind of with a steady source of energy versus high carbohydrate meals like the cookies and the pastas and the bread and the cereals. When you eat them, they spike your blood sugar sky high, which in our hormones masterclass we talked about is the number one cause for hormonal disruption and anxiety and depression and weight gain. So we don't want to just spike our blood sugar and then have a huge crash later because when our blood sugar spikes, remember our cortisol spikes, when our cortisol spikes, it spikes our insulin, which stores fat. When cortisol spikes, it also steals progesterone, which is our calming, awesome sex hormone. And so it messes up all your sex hormones. So no spiked blood sugar, no uh, processed carbohydrates. That would be what we want to stay away from. So complex carbohydrates would be stuff like sweet potatoes, plantains, squashes. Um, and then you can do like kind of grain-like seeds like quinoa and millet and amaranth, um, buckwheat. All that kind of stuff is actually good carbohydrates that um, does not spike your blood sugar. So that's what we want to eat. And then it's also a good tip to anytime um, you are eating a carbohydrate, it's best not to eat carbohydrates alone. So even if you're so anytime you're eating a carbohydrate, a tip is to always eat it with a fat or a protein to slow that absorption of glucose in the body to not spike your blood sugar. So always have butter or sweet potato or butter or coconut oil on your sweet potatoes and squashes um, and have avocado or nuts or something with fruit. Um, so the type of carbs you or the amount of carbs you need is very dependent on the type of person, the age, the weight, the goals, the activity level. So we won't get into that right now, but those are the carbohydrates to avoid and those are the ones to eat. Okay, principle number two is food quality. Now, so this is the, the most important aspect of food is the quality of it. So processed food, non-organic food. So we wanna stay away from GMOs, pesticides, antibiotics, artificial chemicals, because what what this happens is when you consume GMOs, pesticides, antibiotics, all of those things, what they're what it's doing is it's poking holes in your digestive tract. And so then you have all these little holes in your digestive tract where food and chemicals and everything you're eating gets loosened to your bloodstream, which then causes inflammation, which then causes food intolerances and a whole which then causes even autoimmune diseases. So you might not feel anything bad while you're eating these, but it's the accumulation of year after year of eating pesticides and GMOs and antibiotics that is slowly but surely destroying your gut, which is your which is the foundation of all your health. So you don't want holes in your gut. You don't want stuff leaking into your bloodstream, which is exactly what these foods do. Um, so like I said, it doesn't happen overnight, but the more you do it, the more it's damaging your gut. So we really need to pay attention to the quality of our food, which I'm sure you know. Okay, so now we need to obviously avoid toxic foods. So like I said, avoid the toxic fats, vegetable oils. They are rancid, they cause inflammation in your body. We really, really need to avoid those. The second thing that is detrimental to your body is non-organic and farmed animal products. These animals are filled with, well, first of all, they eat GMOs and pesticides, and they're filled with antibiotics. So when you eat them, you are eating that as well, which is causing so many problems in so many people's bodies right now. So that's what's hard when you go out to eat in restaurants. It's just, it's just hard to find um, organic animal products, but that's super important for your body. If, if you had to buy anything organic, please just buy organic animal products, and your body will thank you. So obviously we need to avoid fast food, processed food, artificial sweeteners and ingredients, ingredients you can't announce, GMOs, and vegetable oils. So 
we really need to avoid those toxic foods if you want to be healthy. Okay, so the fourth principle in our functional nutrition is gut health. And this is actually um, the biggest probably foundation in functional nutrition because the gut is the cornerstone for your health. It influences your brain, your mood, everything. So what you eat is obviously important, but how you're eating the food is more important because you could be eating the healthiest food in the world, but if your gut is not functioning properly, then you can't absorb the nutrients from the food that you are eating, even if it's the best food in the world. So that's why your gut health is so important. Um, so, so basically, it's 80% of your immune systems in your gut. So it's what keeps you healthy. So if you don't have a healthy gut, that's when you're so open to infections and inflammation and bacteria and viruses and hormone imbalances and especially autoimmune diseases. Um, so also, more serotonin is produced in your gut then is produced in your brain. So like I said, there is a gut-brain connection. So if you have problems with your gut, it actually can lead to depression and anxiety and diseases. Um, so why it's so important, like I said, because it you eat and your gut has to pull out the nutrients from the food and take it to where they need to where they need to go. Well, like I said, if your gut's not healthy, it's not doing that. So you're not even getting the nutrients from your food. And your gut is also is what's supposed to keep out bad bacteria, pathogens, and undigested food. But like I said, most people in our world today have leaky gut, which are small holes in your digestive system. Um, and they allow food and unwanted particles to go into your bloodstream. And why do we have leaky gut? Because we're eating so many pesticides, GMOs, antibiotics, and drinking tap water that's terrible for you. So here are some signs of leaky gut if you have it, also called intestinal permeability. So if you have any kind of food intolerance or allergies, if you suffer from depression, anxiety, or mood issues, if you have any kind of skin problems, skin problems like acne, eczema, rosacea, huge signs of leaky gut, hormone imbalances, infertility, PCOS, PMS, autoimmune conditions, huge migraines, of course the obvious signs like gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, um, chronic fatigue is huge, brain fog, and allergies. So like I said, a lot of these you wouldn't consider related to the gut, but they absolutely are, especially skin, autoimmune, depression, anxiety, food intolerances. Your gut is the first place to start to heal all that. So like I said, almost all of us have some degree of leaky gut because of the water we're drinking, which is full of chloride, chlorine, fluoride, and antibiotics, the food we're eating, which is full of GMOs and pesticides, and our environmental toxins, like our heavy metals and parasites that are all around us. So um, we really have to be proactive in taking care of our gut because there's a lot coming against us. So those are just kind of some signs that um, you can check for if you have leaky gut. So like I said, the causes of leaky gut, we know inflammation causes leaky gut. What causes inflammation? Sugar, vegetable oils, gluten, and GMOs can cause leaky gut. Also, you could have other infections like parasites, candida, SIBO. Uh, medications are huge like birth control, antibiotics, um, and acid blocking drugs. Terrible, terrible, terrible for your gut, unfortunately. Stress, actually, um, emotional or physical stress can cause leaky gut. And then radiation um, is another interesting one. So there's a lot of factors that can cause leaky gut. So like I said, it's so important for us to be proactive and doing things to take care of it. So this is the functional medicine for our approach to gut health. So if you want a healthy gut, this is what you got to do. Remember these four R's. Number one, first R. Remove the bad. So first, you need to start with removing inflammatory foods from your diet, like sugar, 
gluten, and vegetable oils. Remove those foods from your diet right now. Then you need to kind of address any other infections you may have going on, like SIBO, parasites, or candida. You can get tested for all of those. So remember, number one, remove the bad. Number two, second R, restore the good. So once we remove all the things that are causing the problems in your body, then we need to restore your gut with the essential nutrients um, and ingredients for proper digestion and absorption of your food. So this is where we add in key supplements that help your gut um, digest your food, like digestive enzymes, like hydrochloric acid, um, like bile supplements. Um, and of course, it's very, very important to sit down and be present and chew, chew, chew your food until it's liquid because that really helps your body break down and absorb the nutrients instead of just having it sit there and cause problems. So we need to remove the bad, we need to restore the good, which means enzymes and digestive support. Number three, we need to re-inoculate with healthy bacteria. So once we remove the bad, we've restored some help to it, now we need to re-inoculate because an unhealthy gut is, was usually filled with not the best um, balance of bacteria. So, so we need to restore your microflora and your beneficial bacteria is crucial. So by consuming probiotic foods like sauerkraut and kefir, probiotics, um, and just probiotic supplements and like coconut kefir and drinks, uh, probiotic drinks like that. Number four, now we need to repair the gut. So we've removed the bad, restored the good, re-inoculated the gut. Now we need to repair it. So there's essential nutrients that are available that actually are, that target repairing that gut lining. So these nutrients are things like L-glutamine, um, omega-3, zinc, sleep precipitary elm. There's a lot of things that can help with it. The number one superfood and thing you can do to help restore your drunk, your drunk, your gut is to drink bone broth every single day. Bone broth, you'll probably hear way more about it um, in the coming years, but it's 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 one of the most powerful things you can ever do for your health, your gut health, your liver health, your hormonal health. It basically is full of so many healing nutrients and vitamins and minerals and amino acids that heal the gut, help your liver detoxify. It's amazing. So definitely include foods like bone broth every day to help repair the gut. So remember the four R's to take care of your gut. Remove the bad, get rid of the bad food, restore the good, start taking, um, paying attention to your digestive health and helping your food digest. Number three, we need to re-inoculate. So like, um, fill your body with healthy bacteria and four we need to repair the gut so eating things every day that are specifically gut friendly and help heal your gut lining like bone broth okay so that was gut health now number five another huge 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 topic in the functional nutrition world right now is your microbiome we have discovered that the microbiome is basically in charge of your health. You have more bacteria in your body than you do cells. They are pretty much what's running us. They are keeping you healthy. They are protecting you from viruses, bacteria, and disease, or they're not, depending if you have dysbiosis, which means you have more bad bacteria than good bacteria. So let's dive in. So your microbiome. You want to have a diverse microbiome. You want to have um, enough good bacteria to keep the bad bacteria and parasites and yeasts in check. So we need to have an abundance of healthy bacteria because they detoxify your body, they protect you from viruses and disease, they're like nature's vaccine, truly. And as your microbiome also helps absorb the nutrients from your food and create vitamins from them. They're also your body's defense and energy system. So. Like I said, if you don't have enough healthy bacteria, then um, then your body is not protected and it's not and it's not using your food like it should. So the healthier your gut and 
in your microbiome, the healthier your skin, your body, your life, your mood, everything. So your gut and microbiome are actually similar in the things you need to do to take care of it. Um, so we'll go into that. So basically, without a healthy microbiome, you cannot have the healthy immune system because your microbiome is your immune system. Without, without a healthy immune system, that's when you're open to infections, hormone imbalances, and autoimmune diseases. So, um, like I said, very, very important to have a good microbiome. So, now, so it's, it's, it's the same thing about your gut. What harms the microbiome? Well, certain medications, birth control, antibiotics, terrible for your microbiome. They kill all that good bacteria that's keeping you alive and making you feel good. Um, chemicals. So chemicals in our environment, like our personal care products, like hand sanitizers with triclosan and commercial shampoos with like sodium lauryl sulfate. And you can go look at your labels right now. I guarantee you those are on there. Um, I have a blog if you want to look at the certain ingredients you need to look for in your personal care products that are actually completely damaging your microbiome. Toxic foods, sugar, vegetable oils, processed food, factory farm meats, GMOs, and fast food, obviously, kill your microbiome. Terrible for your good bacteria. And they actually feed the bad bacteria. So the more sugar and vegetable oils and fast food and non-organic animal products you consume, the more bad bacteria you're building up in your body, which you do not want. Okay, so next we also know that processed sugar and flour is the main thing that feeds the bad bacteria. So then when you're feeding the bad bacteria so much, then you have that dysbiosis and you're feeding that yeast. So if you crave sugar a lot, a lot of times it's actually the bacteria inside of you that's craving, that wants you to feed them to sugar. So if you have major sugar cravings, then you definitely want to check out... Um, if you have some kind of form of yeast overgrowth or candida um, or parasites because they crave sugar and they want you to eat sugar to feed them to keep them alive. So if you have terrible sugar cravings, that's definitely something to look into. And I have lots of other posts about that if you need help. Um, so like I said, when you eat a lot of sugar, then it feeds that bad bacteria and then it leads to mood swings and fatigue and a host of other digestive issues. Okay. So that's what you need to avoid for a healthy microbiome. Now, what is good for your microbiome? Um, well, like we said, probiotics. Probiotics, huge. Number one thing is fermented foods. Fermented foods are so incredibly amazing for your um, microbiome because they feed the good bacteria. They um, and they help keep everything in line. So things like sauerkraut, kimchi, kefir, probiotic pills and powders. Um, so we have probiotics, and then you also need prebiotics. So prebiotics are what feed the probiotics. So examples of prebiotics are things um, like vegetables, like, like specific vegetables like onions and garlic and plantains and potatoes that, are, that have actually been cooked and then cooled. They're all really good forms of prebiotic and resistant starch that make amazing food for all of the healthy bacteria in your body. So another reason to eat tons of vegetables because it's you're feeding your good bacteria. Um, and then being exposed to nature and dirt, awesome for your microbiome and your gut health. We're actually way, way, way too clean. And even with our kids these days, we're just so um, anal about keeping them clean and, and, and everything. But actually the best thing you can do for their immune system is to get them outside playing in the dirt. Healthiest thing you can do. So very, very, very um, important. So obviously it's important to use natural personal care products because um, you also have a microbiome on your skin. So you have bacteria living on your skin. When you use these hard shampoos and body washes and hand soaps, you're killing all the good bacteria that protects you. So you need natural stuff that does not kill them. Okay, so those were the five principles of functional nutrition. So like I said, no matter what diet you choose to follow, if you follow these five principles, these are the most important parts of your body staying in the best health. So like I said, you have your essential nutrients. So you have your 
micronutrients. Like I said, many people are deficient in micronutrients. So this is where you need to be eating tons of vegetables. Things like you can supplement with a good greens powder. It provides you with good micronutrients and vitamins and minerals. Um, huge and all, and they help kind of, like I said, carry out every biochemical reaction in your body. So micronutrients are huge, which are your vitamins and your minerals. Then you have your amino acids, which are your proteins. So proteins are the building blocks for what? Neurotransmitters. So you're, remember to be eating enough protein so you're eating enough, so you're giving your body the building blocks to make neurotransmitters. Essential fatty acids are the building blocks for what? Hormones. Hormones and your brain and your cells, basically. So we have to be eating so many, a lot of healthy, uh, most of your diet should be vegetables and healthy fats. Um, to give your body the building blocks it needs to create a healthy brain function and healthy hormones. Okay, and then we need complex carbohydrates, like we said, things that do not spike your blood sugar, like sweet potatoes, quinoa, things like that. And then we also need um, things like probiotics, amino or probiotics, enzymes, like digestive enzymes, things that really, really um, support your gut which we'll go over. So number two is food quality. Remember, the reason why it's important is because when you're eating all this non-organic food and fast food, it's poking holes in your digestive tract, causing leaky gut, which causes pretty much every other thing and issue that you're dealing with. So it's really important to um, get good quality food to protect your gut, Okay, which protects your whole body. Number three is we need to avoid the toxic food. So remember, we need to avoid vegetable oils, we need to avoid non-organic meat, and we need to avoid sugar and gluten as much as we can, um, and then of course pesticides, GMOs, everything like that. So number four is your gut health. So like we said, your gut is the foundation of your health, and you could be eating the healthiest food in the world, but if you don't have a healthy functioning gut, then you can't absorb the food you're getting. You can't absorb the nutrients you're getting from the food that you're eating. So, for your gut health, remember we need to avoid all the toxic food that we just talked about. We need to eat an anti-inflammatory diet, which is full of healthy fats and vegetables and clean proteins um, and things like superfoods like bone broth and fermented foods. Huge, huge, huge for your gut, your life, your entire body. So we really need to do things, avoid things that hurt our gut, and be proactive in doing things every single day that take care of our gut, and your immune system will be strong, your hormones will be strong, and any, any issue that you're dealing with right now will be improved. Always start with healing your gut. Okay, and number five is your microbiome, which is all that awesome little, all these bacteria um, that protect you from viruses and diseases. They take your food and make nutrients from it. Um, they keep, they actually affect your mood. So the bacteria in your gut affect your mood. They affect your food preferences and what you eat. So we really need to make sure we have a good balance of good bacteria to bad bacteria to avoid dysbiosis, which means avoiding things that feed the good bad bacteria like sugar and vegetable oils and all the things that kind of help the bad bacteria and we need to consume fermented foods and live kind of a ferment for live a probiotic lifestyle for, to take care of your microbiome so um like i said here's some takeaways okay takeaways from your functional nutrition master class if you do these things it's the then whatever diet you eat you will be healthy so you need to eat an anti-inflammatory diet which I told you consists of fruits and vegetables and clean proteins and healthy fats and complex carbohydrates. And I provide you, I can provide you a list with all of the foods that are in an anti-inflammatory diet. We need to avoid toxic foods. So you need to avoid vegetable oils and you need to avoid gluten and sugar as much as you can. You need to avoid um, factory farmed and non-organic animal products and GMOs and pesticides. So we really need to avoid that. You need to avoid toxic personal care products. So 
go in and look at your shampoos, your lotions, your toothpaste, and I give you a list of um, ingredients to check for to see if they're in your products, which I guarantee you they are if they're not natural, um, which are harming your gut and your microbiome. So, and then number four, eat vegetables at every single meal. So most of your diet, like I said, should be healthy fats and vegetables. So make sure you have all of those at your meal. Um, like I said, healthy fats like coconut oil, grass-fed butter, avocados, huge, huge, huge for um, your skin, your energy, your brain, your hormones. Like I said, um, drink one half your weight in ounces of water each day. Huge game changer also. You'll notice a huge difference in your skin, huge difference in your energy, huge difference in your digestion if you do that. Number six, you need to chew your food thoroughly and eat in a relaxed state. So if you're eating fast and on the run, your body's not going to digest and absorb and assimilate the nutrients from the food you are eating. So you could be eating, again, the healthiest food, but if you're eating fast and rushed, then your body's not getting the nutrients from it. So that's huge. Whatever you're eating, eat it slow. Eat fermented foods, and I would add drink bone broth every single day if you can. And then, like I said, eat plenty and plenty of healthy fat. If you can kind of base your meals around having vegetables, having a clean healing protein, a healthy fat, and some kind of fermented food in it, you will be golden. And if you need help with this, I have just the cheap, just little um, program that you can get that that gives you these um, seven steps that you need from gut health to anti-inflammatory diet, what that means. Um, I include in that to help you. So I include shopping lists. I include a list of anti-inflammatory foods. Um, so I include a list of what foods to eat, what foods to avoid to make it super easy for you. I include a supplement guide of good supplements to take. I include um, shopping lists and a meal guide and a health challenge for each day. I include um, how to create your own cleanse, which is always great for your body. I include actually interval and HIIT workouts for you. Um, 15 delicious recipes. And then, um, and then you can go on our private Facebook group, which is... Just kind of always just sharing tips like this of how to how to help your mind, how to nourish your spirit, and then just to ask any more questions that you have. So um, I also have it also includes a daily checklist of things that to do, things to avoid, to have a healthy body. Um, so if you want that, that is also on the site. And that was uh, the functional nutrition masterclass, and I will see you in the next class.